Welcome to the Hey Brownberry podcast. It's so lovely to have you here. I'm Mars. I'm known around the interwebs as Hey Brownberry. You can find me under that name on Instagram, Ravelry, sometimes on Twitter. I'm very happy that you decided to join me on today's podcast. You will have seen by the images and videos in the beginning of this podcast that I'm not in my home location, which is South Florida. I'm actually filming this while I'm on vacation with my family. We're on the island of Maui and enjoying a lovely Hawaiian vacation. And you might think it's a little strange that I wanted to record a podcast while on vacation, but for us, vacation represents time stretched out before us to do the things that we love. And I love connecting with all of you. So I took this opportunity to just quickly pop in and share some of what I've been working on in my making journey. And I'm hopeful that this will just all be part of a great memory of our trip. So we're going to be here for a few days. And if you're like me when you travel, your knitting projects are a big part of your planning. And sometimes that can be a bit stressful, uh, especially when there are things like long flights, um, you know, days where you don't have a lot of scheduled things planned and you know you might have some downtime to do some making. As we were packing, I was thinking about all of that and trying to be very conservative about the number of projects that I brought with me. I think I did okay. I'll share with you guys some of what I plan to work on while I'm here. You'll let me know if you think it was a, it was a crazy amount of projects to bring. I have about seven days of travel and vacation time, so that gives you some context. So switching things up slightly, I, if you've been here before, you know that I talk primarily about knitting. Sorry, I'm just fixing my hair. <laughs> I do um, a good amount of knitting as that's my, I would say that's my primary craft. I also crochet and recently have started to spin, but I'm going to switch it up a little bit and start with some chatter about spinning. I don't have any of my finished spinning projects here with me, but I am a drop spindle spinner. I don't own a wheel yet. So I have been practicing hand spinning with my shocked drop spindle. I just love those little sheep under there. Um, so this spindle, I purchased it based on uh, the description that said that it could handle up to about four ounces of spun fiber, which is a, a good amount I've learned. And I am getting a little better with each hand spun project. So I brought this with me because in a hotel room, or even down by the beach, I thought this is a really portable craft. And I have traveled with this spindle before and been able to do some, make some hand spun and I really enjoy that as a switch to my knitting. So I've got my drop spindle and I brought some fiber that was actually gifted to me. I'll share this with you guys. Um, the label says that it's a combination of Merino and BFL fiber. Blueface Leicester. Am I saying that right? Blueface Leicester. This is a gift from Maria of Ninja Chickens. It's a little blown out. Let me hold it back here. How tropical is this color? So before I left home, I did a, a tiny bit of prep on this. It just came, it wasn't prepped in roll legs or anything like that. Um, it just came, you know, kind of packaged all together. So I believe the, the mix is all, has already been done in the preparation of this fiber, meaning that I think the Merino and BFL are mixed in together. Hopefully you can see that well. And there's some light blue and some darker blue. So all I did before I left home is I kind of laid out the fibers um, parallel to each other because they were sort of bundled up before. And then I just sort of rolled it into a sausage roll. <laughs> 
And what I plan to do, and those of you who are spinners can give me some advice in the comments below, but my plan is I'm just gonna take some, some lengths of fiber off of the bundle where it naturally separates and just draft and spin from those, which is gonna give me a mix of colors among the different blues. I have been spinning so far not quite a year, and the most typical weight for me seems to be somewhere between uh, a sport and a worsted <laughs> weight yarn. Um, my last hand spun was pretty fine, which I really enjoyed. It came out um, fingering weight, I would say. I'll insert a picture here um, of the hand spun that I did, which is the chocolate brown Nash Island fleece in between these other two skeins from my stash. So that came out to, I'd call it a heavy fingering weight. And I'm gonna try for the same with this fiber because I really like that weight um, for what I would eventually knit. And I don't have any plans for what that fiber will be knit into yet. I'm just gonna enjoy the spinning part of it and go from there. So that's one thing I plan to work on while I'm here. The other projects that I, that I brought with me, I plan them according to just wanting to have some variety and wanting to change up things like the techniques I would be using and the tools I would be using, like my needles. So I'll give you an example. I've already finished one project since I got here. No surprise, it's a small project, it's a hat. So this hat is called Coin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. You'll notice right away that there is kind of an asymmetrical brim if I turn it around, you'll see that one edge of the brim is long and the other is short. As you go around, which makes for a really cool effect. There are also some ridges on the hat that are created by pearl rows in the, in the midst of the stockinette. And there's some short row shaping that happens where this portion is kind of a skinny ridge and then that ridge gets broader as you go around. And that's created by a short row effect. This is a woolly worm head hat. It's gonna look crazy on my current hairstyle, but that's okay. Woolly worm head is my absolute favorite hat designer. I am so excited that I will get to meet her in person in March when I go to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival in Scotland. Super fangirl, no shame. And she and I have planned to spend some time together. This hat is number two of a dozen hats that I plan to knit this year as part of a knit along that I run in Woolly Wormhead's Ravelry group. It's called the Woolly Dozen. And this is our third year in a row knitting along together with woolly worm head patterns. The goal is to knit 12 hats for the year. So that's about one a month, but there are no knitting police. And the group is very open and encouraging. You can knit all 12 at one, you know, in any pace that works well for you. You can knit less than 12, you can knit more than 12. It's just a goal, and it's just a way for us to explore and experience more of Wooly's patterns. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, the design elements in many of Wooly's hats already add interest. So I specifically brought this hat because there were some really cool construction techniques for the brim and the short rows, and I knew that that would kind of keep my brain engaged. Um, and it used up almost all of this Critium Handmaid's yarn, which is a worsted superwash merino. Um, this is a one-of-a-kind colorway, but I will tell you that this kind of rich, colorful mix um, with no pooling is really in the style of this dyer, SS, of Critium Handmaid's. 
Um, I've worked with her yarn now a couple of times recently and previously, and it's always such a pleasure to work with. So I finished that hat the first day after, sorry, earthquake. I finished that hat the first day after we got here. Um, and the technique piece of it was great. I actually ended up using straight needles. These are lantern moons. They're size eight, US eight, five millimeter needles, and I have not used straight needles in such a long time. But part of the brim construction um, lent itself to using straight needles for the knitting, and I really enjoyed it. I love these needles. I've had them for over a decade, and they're just as enjoyable to work with now. So that was a piece of keeping the project interesting. I also used a 16 inch circular needle for the body of the hat. So that was primarily, um, you know, that was the, the most amount of knitting I did was in the stockinette in the body and the hat. But then when it came to the crown decreases for the hat where the stitch number, the stitch count gets less and less, I intentionally brought my uh, Brittany needles, double pointed needles. So obviously in the same size, size five millimeter. Um, so I have a few different sizes just tucked into this pack, but the ones that I used were these seven and a half inch DPNs. Again, I have not worked with double pointed needles in a really long time. I do find them fiddly. And so that was part of the reason I switched over from double pointed knitting, double pointed needle knitting to magic loop or fixed circular knitting. But for these crown decreases, when the stitch count was fairly low, I really enjoyed working on these for the hat. So my intention proved itself out. I got multiple types of knitting within that one project and it just kept me interested. Our flight over here, one of the segments of our flight over here was eight and a half hours. <laughs> it's a lot of time to sit and I used a lot of it to knit, I'm very grateful. We, we watched movies on the flight and we dozed on the flight, but then there's still a lot of hours, so I was able to do a good amount of work on that hat. I'm really glad to have finished it. Please join us in the Wooly Wormheads Wooly Dozen if you'd like to knit some hats this year. They're great for you and they're great for gifts. Highly recommend it. Okay, fair warning, all the rest of the projects I'm going to talk about are sock projects, um, but they're all a little bit different and I've chosen them for different reasons. So I love sock knitting as portable knitting. Are you that way too? Do you tend to take smaller, more portable projects? Or do you take stretches of time like vacation or road tripping to work on larger projects and really make progress on something like a sweater or a blanket? Let me know. I'm interested to know what you choose when you know you have a good amount of time to sit and knit. I tend to choose smaller and portable. Um, so socks fit that bill very, very well. So one of the projects that I brought with me, again, started with an idea of what I would find interesting. And in this pair of socks, I'm actually making a stripy pair for my girls. Um, this is a first of a couple of pairs of stripy socks for my daughters. I'm doing advent calendars for them this year. So during the holiday season, I'll be gifting them 24 little goodies and a pair of socks will be part of that starting early in the hopes that I'll actually accomplish this goal. The first pair of socks is started as of last night. So this cute little stitch marker is by the same hand dyer, Critium Handmaids. It's just a little Canadian maple leaf. I adore it. I started these socks toe up, just cast on 14 stitches using a Turkish cast on. If you're not familiar with that, there's lots of great YouTube videos on cast ons for toe up socks. And then I increased it so that the total sock uh, stitch count is 64 stitches. This first yarn is a Regia that I received in a swap from a knitting friend from Germany. It's a beautiful navy blue with tweed flex in it. And then you'll see that I've already begun to stripe in this little goodie. This is a mini from a set of minis from the Sexy Knitter. Hi, Sarah. Sarah the Sexy Knitter gifted this set of minis, actually two sets of minis to me, when she found out I was working on a scrappy crochet blanket. 
Instead of putting these in the blanket though, I've decided that I'm going to stripe them into these socks. So let's see if I can give you guys an idea of how this is gonna go. Here are the minis. Thanks for your patience with my lighting situation. I'm never gonna complain about bright, beautiful light coming into the room. <laughs> so I am planning to add these colors in um, I keep changing my mind about the sequence in which I'll put them into the sock, but that's the general idea. I will do this blue as contrasting toes, heels, and cuffs, and they'll probably be about mid-calf length. I'm really excited about that. This is the first set of minis um, that I'll be using, and the reason I chose it is because I know that when I'm knitting vanilla socks, one of the things that really keeps me going is getting to the next color stripe. Love that. There's another set that will very likely be on the second sock. I'm not concerned about these being crazy colors and all mixed up, and neither will my girls be concerned. They'll actually love that effect. So here's the other set. Mm, I love them. I just, I just love these. I mean, these colors are so vibrant, first of all, and I think they'll make really cool stripes next to each other, and it will keep me interested as I go. My other sock project is one that's using yarn that I dyed for Dynamics Yarns, which is the indie dyed yarn company that I run with my oldest teenage daughter, Adachi. Hi, Adachi. I am, I'm assuming that they'll watch this video at some point, but I am gonna tell them not to watch it yet because of the whole Advent gift thing. <laughs> but um, I'm working on one of our recent yarns, Colorways, in a pair of socks with a stitch pattern that I just kind of came up with. It's a sort of a broken rib pattern and I may publish this pattern so I won't tell you guys too much about it yet but again I started toe up with these and I'm using a colorway that was part of a Maker Muse series. This was part of a sock set in honor of my friend Maria from Ninja Chickens and I'm combining it with this colorway which is called Galaxy Unicorn. I'll show it to you in the skein. So this is one of the yarns in our shop on Etsy. It's pinks and blues and purples and a little bit of cream color all mixed in. And I really like the way that it is knitting up in the pattern part of the sock as well as in the stockinette. This is the bottom of the foot, so that's just the stockinette portion. I'm very much enjoying those. I have already turned the heel on this one, just a standard short row heel, and I'm on my way up into the leg. This will be um, a short, a shorty sock pair, so I'll do a short gray cuff on these after I do a little bit more knitting in the Galaxy Unicorn colorway. I'm carrying those in one of my absolute favorite project bags. This was made for me by my friend Kelly of the Celtic Cast On podcast. I know it's wrinkly, Kel, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because I love on it so much and I put it in my suitcase. And she made this for me as part of a bag swap that we did, which was very early on as we were becoming friends and I just cherish it so much. The inside is in one of her favorite colors and mine, a beautiful yellow. And it also sports a nice little, um, what do I call this? It's a zipper pull. Hopefully you guys can see that. It says Quispamsis on it, which is the city in New Brunswick. So um, this is a great bag for toting around with me on vacation. Really enjoying that knit. One more to show you guys. I know this is a sock heavy podcast. Hope you're okay with that. Where are my sock knitters at? <laughs> this last one is also from a yarn colorway from Dynamics Yarns, but it's a project that was started and then kind of abandoned. Adachi had started these as part of a test knit and she just kind of fell out of love with working on it, which is fine. I don't pressure the girls about things like that. Knitting is not supposed to be stressful. We had done a dye batch of sock blanks a while back and this sock blank we called Ghost in the Machine. So this is a single strand sock blank, even though there's a lot of curlies going on here. Um, I'm actually just working from one strand. It's a single strand sock blank. 
So it's a superwash merino nylon with some gray, some black, some neon green in there. So we had done um, a series of just kind of one of a kind sock blanks and Adachi actually started a sock in this yarn. I'll show that to you guys. And it's doing this really cool, it's kind of a pooling effect, but just these little splashes of neon show up in the black and gray in different parts of the sock. So she also started this toe up, but she's doing um, a heel flap and gusset. If you've knit heel flap and gusset socks toe up before, you know that there's a portion where you start to create the gusset by increasing a lot of stitches. So that's the portion where she kind of left this to hibernate. So I've brought it with me because I'd like to make some progress on it. And when I looked at the sock blank again, I just fell in love with it all over again. I enjoy knitting from sock blanks. Do you? If you are a sock knitter and you have knit with sock blanks before, I'd love to hear, you know, what's your feeling on it. And if you haven't tried it before, I highly recommend it. It's just a really cool, easy to carry project. And quite honestly, for travel, I kind of fold it up, put the sock in it and the needles, tuck it in my bag and go. I just want to highlight another project bag that I'm using because I tend to, um, you know, have these projects on the go for a while so I have project bags with me for a good amount of time and one of the ones I reached for recently was this one. This is a Brie bag. My friend Brie is Stitchzilla on Instagram and she sells Brie bags on Etsy. This bag is incredible. First of all, purple. Let's start there. The print is beautiful. It's reversible. On the inside are my favorite butterflies. Love butterflies. So sometimes during <laughs> during my works in progress, I will just flip this bag inside out because then it's like I'm carrying a whole new bag. It's something else that's really pretty to look at. Love a drawstring. Uh, my pins on here got a lot of uh, commentary when I posted on Instagram. This one, oh, it's turned weird. Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. Uh, Black Girl Magic. This one says, hold on, let me hold it over here and see if that's better. Make Do and Mend. And this one says, Maker of Things. Love those. <laughs> Enamel pins and other collectibles like this. I'm such a sucker for them, honestly. It connects us, you know, when we have these little symbols of things that are important to us, and maybe you see someone else with one that's similar or one that you like, and you're like, ah, hey, pin game is strong. I like it. <laughs> so I really enjoy these little reminders, too, of other talented makers. And that actually wraps up my little project review. I'm so grateful to have this time. My family, um, they sacrifice a lot during the year. So because I travel for work quite often, when I get an opportunity to be away with them and relax, especially by a beach under some palm trees, I, I am full of gratitude. We travel very well together. Um, not all teenagers would do 12 hours of flying without getting salty and being really grumpy, but my girls have done very well on trips like this. They're out with dad enjoying some pool time right now while I chat with you. So I'm very grateful to have the time to make, I mean, seriously, to be surrounded by all this color and all these reminders of my friends from home is pretty incredible. I hope that wherever you are, you are also enjoying some time to make and do the things that you love. It's always a pleasure for me to be able to share this with you. It sounds strange to say that I'm sharing it with you because it's not real time, but that's how I feel when I'm talking to the camera. Like there are people out there that I have a lot of things in common with, and that makes me feel so grateful. <laughs> I hope that you guys have a very good week and uh, always feel free to comment below ask questions. I don't have a Ravelry group associated with this podcast, so a lot of my communication is done through this YouTube channel, and I'm on Instagram very often, so you can always reach me there. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Enjoy some more sunshine coming up. Mm -hmm.